So you heard a little bit about Blink Ops, but now it's time to see it in action. To start, we're going to showcase how we can use our AI Copilot to build a typical SOC response workflow. We're going to start by clicking New Workflow and then entering the prompt that we want the AI to generate the workflow based off of. We want to define the trigger and the actions we want it to take. So in this case, we're going to say on a new Splunk alert, if it is critical, we want to suspend the user in Okta, isolate the device using CrowdStrike, and generate a ServiceNow ticket. After that, we're going to click Generate Workflow. It's going to take a couple seconds. It's going to pull from over 30,000 individual API endpoints that we have built in as no-code building blocks, and then try to generate the workflow. We can make any edits here if we want to, or in this case, we'll click Create. Next, you'll see that our AI Copilot defined the trigger of this workflow to be a webhook from Splunk. And then the steps performed, we're first going to get the alert details. We're going to do a conditional statement to evaluate if the alert is critical. And then we're going to perform the following actions that we defined in the prompt. Next steps here would just be adding the required connections needed for each downstream service and then publishing the workflow. While this flow does cover everything that we provided in the initial prompt, there's one problem to it, and that's that it's very impactful to the end user. Most of the time, you won't have an alert that's going to be accurate enough that you can go and suspend and isolate. Therefore, we like to facilitate a human-in-the-loop approval. To do this, we will add a new step above our previous response actions. We have a built-in item called Ask a Question via Slack, which is an interactivity step. We'll send the question, and then we'll wait for a response back. We can fill out things like who we're sending the question to, what question we're asking, in this case, saying uh, to the SOC team that we saw a new a critical Splunk alert, do you want us to isolate, suspend, and generate a ticket? The possible answers are either yes or no, and this is presented in a Slack button form. Next, we'll add an if statement, basically evaluating if the output of our ask a question via Slack step equals yes, which means that the uh, SOC team clicked on the yes button, then we're going to perform our various response actions and we're going to do that by dragging that under the yes branch of this if statement. So to summarize, in a matter of minutes, we have built our first workflow that evaluates the severity, facilitates the approval, and if the approval is granted, performs the response items in Okta, CrowdStrike, and ServiceNow. This not only saves time and manual effort, but it also ensures that each one of your alerts is responded to uh, in a templated and standardized fashion. So the next use case we're going to be showcasing is around utilizing our self-service portal to uh, facilitate just-in-time provisioning to an RDS database with an approval. Uh, so as you see here, I have a, a pretty simple workflow, um, three input parameters around access duration, the database name, and IAM username. And then the steps perform is just going to ask for approval. If, if it's approved, we're going to uh, add the user, obviously, to the a group in IAM. If it's not approved, we'll send a denial message. And then the workflow is going to pause as we wait for that access duration to uh, complete. Uh, in this case, I have it set to seconds and a production kit state. It probably be minutes or hours, potentially, or days, however you want to configure it. Uh, and then after that uh, wait period has been completed, uh, we will remove the user from the group. Uh, so on the IAM front, uh, we do have two groups set up, one for each database, and then uh, tied to uh, said group is an inline policy uh, that provides full access to just that one uh, database resource. So if we look at the self-service portal, this is essentially an app portal. So your end users can come into here, they can see what's exposed, and you can uh, have a specific access control around uh, these different applications you want to, want to expose. Um, and then when they click into that, they can see the three input parameters we had configured. Access duration, let's select 15, we'll select DB1, and test user 1 is what we're working with. So when I click run here, you'll see that its current action is asking for approval. So over in my Slack channel here, I have configured as this is the you know theoretical uh, uh, place where whoever's authorized to be approving these requests would be in this channel, and then they could just click yes or no. So again, this provides all the different details that is needed. Um, let's click yes, just to show, and we'll see current action is sleeping. So we're waiting for that, uh, that access duration to be over. You'll see that there's one user in this group now, which is test user one. And then if we jump back over here, we're just going to wait until this wraps up. All right, run complete. We'll come back over here and refresh. You'll see that it finished the access duration period and then uh, removed that access for that user. Again, in a production stance, it would be a little bit longer than 15 seconds, I would hope. 
So far throughout this demo, we've walked you through the builder's perspective, showing how to create and implement your first SOC response use case. Next, we explored the end user experience, demonstrating how they can leverage a self-service application to gain temporary RDS access. With BlinkOps, the possibilities are virtually limitless. Our platform serves as a Blink canvas, orchestrating workflows across a wide range of technology vendors to suit the customer's specific needs. For those who prefer a more structured approach, we offer a template library of over 7,000 pre-built workflows. These workflows are fully built and ready to be imported into a customer's workspace and provide immediate value. These templates cover a variety of IT and security domains, as well as other areas like CICD automation and cost optimization. If we drill into cost optimization and look for AWS, you can see we already out of the box have a variety of cost enhancement reports available for multiple AWS services which helps customers identify unnecessary or misconfigured resources that may be costing them uh, more than necessary. BlinkOps provides the flexibility to streamline these costs by automating both the detection and remediation of these inefficiencies. Beyond automating tasks, BlinkOps empowers companies to audit their environment for any scenario you need to monitor for, whether it's looking for security misconfigurations, policy violations, cost inefficiencies, or anything else you want to define and search for. Ultimately, BlinkOps reduces manual effort, ensures consistent processes, and enhances the customer's ability to operate efficiently, all while helping them save time and reduce costs.